Welcome to GMAT Math Online Math Prep Videos. In this GMAT Math Online video, we explain more concepts involving real numbers. We start with repeating nines. The customary approach for determining the fraction that corresponds to a repeating decimal involves subtracting 1 from some power of 10, thus leaving a number with all nines as digits. Here's an example that illustrates this. Problem. If x is the infinitely repeating decimal, 0 0.181818, 1, 1, 1, and so forth, then what is 99x? And here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution. When you see a problem showing a number with all nines in it, like 99, you should be suspicious that you're supposed to express it as a power of 10 minus 1. In this case, the expression is 100 minus 1, which equals 99. So we have the following. 99x equals 100 minus 1x, which equals 100 minus 1 times 0 0.181818, etc. And that equals 100 times 0 0.181818, and so forth minus 0.181818 and so forth. That equals 18.181818, etc. minus 0.181818, etc. which equals 18. So the correct answer is D. This is a trick that happens all the time with repeating decimals. For example, suppose our repeating decimal were 0 0.189, 189.189, 189.189, and so forth. Then just take the number of digits in the repetition, in this example it's 3, and multiply it by 10 to that power. 10 to the third equals 1,000. So, 1,000 times 0.189 and so forth equals 189.189 and so forth. Then subtract the original number, 189.189 and so forth, minus 0.189 and so forth, equals 189. And you have a nice, easy-to-work-with integer, which is the same as the digits in the repetition. Then what would 999, which is 1,000 minus 1, times 0.189 and so forth be? As we just showed, it would be 189. Like magic. Next we look at numbers between minus 1 and 1. When numbers with absolute value larger than 1 are multiplied, the result is larger than the numbers being multiplied. For example, 2 times 3 equals 6, and 6 is larger than both 2 and 3. We're used to this since we see it all the time. But we tend to forget that when numbers with absolute values smaller than 1 are multiplied, the absolute value of the result is smaller than those of the numbers being multiplied. Thus, 1 half times 1 third equals 1 sixth, and 1 sixth is smaller than both 1 half and 1 third. If two numbers with mixed absolute values, one larger and the other smaller than 1, are multiplied, then the result has absolute value between the absolute values of the two. Moreover, if one or both of the numbers is negative, then there are additional considerations. Thus, the product of two negatives is positive, and the product of a negative with a positive is negative, and this could change the greater than less than relationship of the numbers. Problem. If xy equals 1, and x is greater than 0 and less than 1, then which of these is true about y? y is greater than 0 and less than 1, y is greater than 1, y is greater than or equal to 1. And here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution. If xy equals 1, and x is between 0 and 1, but not equal to 0 or 1, then y must be something more than 1. So choice 1 is false and choice 2 is true. 
What about choice three? Choice three is misleading because it says y is greater than or equal to one. And we know it cannot be equal to one. However, choice three is still true. Because if y is, say, three halves, and x equals two thirds, then y is definitely greater than or equal to one. Thus, choice three is true also. So the correct answer is D. Finally, let's see what happens if we combine rationals and irrationals. The sums, differences, products, and quotients of rational numbers are rational. Therefore, the sum, difference, product, or quotient of a rational number with an irrational number must be irrational. To see this, look at the equation 1 plus pi equals x. x must be irrational, because otherwise we could rearrange the terms in the equation and get pi equals x minus 1. If x were rational, then x minus 1 would also be rational. And this would imply that pi is a rational number, which is false. Thus, x must be irrational. Using the same logic, we see that not only the sum, but the difference and product and quotient of a rational with an irrational must be irrational. Problem. Which of the following expressions are rational numbers? The square root of 169, x, where x squared minus 2 equals 0 and x is greater than 0, 7 20 seconds times pi. And here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution. The square root of 169 equals 13, which is rational. So choice 1 is a rational number. If x squared minus 2 equals 0 and x is greater than 0, then x equals the positive square root of 2 which is irrational. So choice 2 is irrational. 7 20 seconds times pi is the product of a rational with an irrational, which is irrational. Remember, 22 sevenths is only a rational approximation to pi. It doesn't equal pi. Therefore, choice 3 is irrational. So the correct answer is A. For more practice GMAT problems, see our other videos and go to www.gmatmath.online. And you can get our ebooks GMAT Math Basics, GMAT Math Problem Solving, and GMAT Math Data Sufficiency. Thanks for your interest.